Hey everybody, it's Mike Marston again, and just going to do a quick video talking about Unity Cloud. Well, it's back to school time um, when I'm making this video, and a lot of people are going to be using Unity for sporting events that are starting to kick off, and I am getting a lot of questions on Unity Cloud, and so I just wanted to do a quick video summarizing the whole thing for everybody. <clears throat> So we were looking at the Unity Cloud page on unityintercom.com forward slash cloud. So I'll go back to the home page. There are three basic software products that Unity Intercom provides. There is the standard Unity Intercom, which is a self-hosted option where Unity Intercom runs on a Mac computer at your location. It's what has all the bells and whistles like third-party program integration and uh, tally uh, and program uh, audio feeds. The more simplistic way to do Unity Intercom is called Unity Cloud. That's where we host the Mac computer, and you simply sign up for our cloud service, create your account, create your users, and you just log in. So literally, you could in 15 minutes, you can purchase the service, tell everybody to download the free app of the Unity Intercom client for Mac, Windows, Android, and... Uh, that's Windows computers, that is. It's uh, Ma iOS and Android for the mobile devices. But So for the Unity Cloud, um, there is no third-party integration. There's no tally. There's no program audio. It is simply Unity Intercom com traffic. So iPhone to Android, iPhone to iPhone, you know, mobile device to mobile device. There is no tally. There is no program feeds. But it's very, very simple, and it's very inexpensive. And this is probably one of the more popular options lately for people trying out Unity, especially for football games, basketball games, things that are going to be very, very difficult to cover via Wi-Fi. And um, so we have a lot of Unity Cloud people, especially a lot of new Unity Cloud people jumping on board. So you go to unityintercom.com, our main website, and you come on down here to Unity Cloud or, or just click on our uh, products and choose Cloud here. So when you, when you click on Unity Cloud, our main page here kind of describes what it is. And we have seven-day event licenses, which you just um, purchase for seven days. This is a great way if you don't know your schedule in advance. If you want to commit to a monthly subscription, great. Um, we will bill you quarterly. So when you first sign up, you'll be billed for three months in advance. Um, but we call it the monthly subscription because you'll save money. Um, and we can, you know, it can be canceled any time. So I, I realize that there may be periods of time where, there, where it's not needed. We can, we can pause it, cancel it. That's no problem. And if you're going to be using it all year long and all the time, um, the annual license is a great way to just purchase that year up front and just have it. So let's say we want to click on the, they have the event licenses. So we'll scroll down to single event. So you can see why Unity Intercom Cloud is so popular. For $93, for, for the entire week, I can have 10 people on comm. And, and for under 100 bucks. If, if I only needed Unity for four or five or six different games, maybe like away games or something, this would be like a really inexpensive option. Um, and if you need 20 people, it's only $174 for the week for 20 people on comm. Um, the, the event licenses are our most expensive, of course, because it's just an event license. You know, there's no commitment. But um, anyway, so I'll hop back here to our, to our main page. Um, once you sign up and you purchase an event license or whatever, you are given a dashboard. And that's what you're seeing right here. This is the Unity Intercom Cloud dashboard. You have your organization information, you have your subscription, and then you have the users. So right away, the organization name, this is our Unity demo account. Now, the organization is actually kind of important because everybody has to type that in the first time. And if you have a really long organization name, that's going to be really difficult to communicate in the field when people who don't know what Unity is are downloading it for the first time. Because on their phones, when they download the free Unity Intercom app, they're going to be presented with a screen that looks like this. They're going to choose Unity Cloud as the login connection type. The Bonjour and the Direct Connection are for standard Unity Intercom that you self-host. The Unity Cloud is how anybody with a cloud subscription, that's how your people get on. So you have to put in the company name, which is, in this case, Unity Demo. So you can see how important it is to maybe keep that company name something simple that you can just kind of 
you know, holler at somebody and they're going to know exactly what it is because it needs to be exactly correct. Um, so anyway, you put in the company name, you put in a username and a password that you've been assigned. Um, and I'm, I'm assuming like, you know, you're the administrator, so you're handing out usernames and passwords. So this, I just wanted to show you, this is what that screen's going to look like for all your people. And so in this organization page, this address and information, um, this is only important for your for our record keeping purposes, but the organization name is actually important for logging in. So you put Mike Marston, I'm the primary contact. Now, here are your channel titles. So you have six party line channels. Remember, those are your six talk and listen channels, and this is a way of organizing your event or your comm. Um, in this case, we had uh, I had loaned it to someone that was in a track and field situation. And so these were what we called our different channels here. And of course, there's payment information here and such. So we come over here. I'm going to skip to users. Here's where we create our usernames and our passwords. So here's me. I'm Mike Marston. I'm Mike M. And I can come over here. I've been assigned to our monthly subscription here. I can click edit. So username is Mike M. This is what people log in as. The first name and last name, they are required field, but it's really not that important. Um, the display name, this is how I show up on people's phones. So when they click on the users list, this is what I'm going to show up as, Michael M. Cell phone number is a required field, but that is actually not important. We're going to be removing that, so don't worry about that. I just did one, two, three, four, five, six. We don't actually need that field. And this is kind of important, though. When you create your user, you get to choose which talk and listen channels they'll have access to. Generally, I have found that it works out better when you limit people's ability a little. For example, a lot of times you really only need one or two channels of comm. These are great, but if it's a smaller event, maybe consider just turning those off so that when I log in, I don't even see them. That makes my world a little smaller, makes things a little easier because I don't want to be talking on channel four and other people are trying to talk on two and we're not hearing each other. Make life simple for yourself. And of course, in this case, I'm a channel admin, which has, which just means I have the ability to unlatch everybody's audio. Because if people are latched open and, and I'm getting a lot of noise, I can unlatch everybody if you're a channel admin. The last thing I do want to talk about that throws people is subscriptions. When you create, see, I've clicked on users again, only just to, to show my, my point here. Um, once you, you can make as many usernames with passwords as you want, but they're not active. You can't use them to log in. See, it says assigned to subscription. This person will not be able to log in. It's only until you come to the subscriptions page and you check that person. You put a little checkbox here and you add them to your subscription, so to speak. That's what actually makes that person active so you can log in. So that sometimes throws people. Um, make sure that you've gone to your users and that you have assigned them to a subscription. So you can do it from this page right here, or you can click on the subscriptions. But once you see somebody have, having a plan next to their name, then that person is active. They could actually log in. But, you know, the first time you're seeing something, it's always like kind of cumbersome. But I, I promise you, you're going to get in here and this is like a five minute deal. So with Unity Cloud, if there was a track and field event or a football game and the total, all the comms are down and we need a solution, I could literally go, as long as I had internet access and probably probably a laptop, I could probably do this from my phone, but I'd probably fire up a laptop. I would sign up for an event license or something and I could have these people going, just give me 10 minutes or so, have everybody download the free app and we could have comms. I mean, I could have this ready and I could even show people how to use this 30, 30 minutes before the game. So this is a great way to do, to do comms. Um, and I recommend everybody take a lot more time than that, but I do like to demonstrate just how quick you can jump into a great comm system using Unity Cloud. So, um, kind of to reiterate, just just because I'm you know I'm talking and sometimes I get long winded, there are um, let me jump back over here. So what I was just talking about, remember that was Unity Cloud. You, I'm, we're saying Unity all over the place, and so that's why I can get confusing. Unity Intercom. This product right here is our, it's just like the cloud. The interface is the same, only you configure the users and all the settings on a Mac computer. You download our server software and you run it on a Mac computer and you self-host it. Um, that's, that's the difference. There's a lot more features in Unity Intercom. 
And of course, you can set it up so that people can log in over cellular data or Wi-Fi, um, just like the cloud. The cloud, of course, is simple because you don't mess with any of that stuff, but you do lose a lot of the features. So Unity Intercom and Unity Cloud are both using the Unity Intercom app. It's just a question of Unity Cloud is using our servers, so we've done all that work for you. Unity Intercom, you're creating all of the settings and such yourself. It's more powerful. There's a little more of a learning curve, um, but uh, that's kind of the differences. So Unity Cloud, it's as simple as choosing a license, signing up for it, creating your users, getting the word out, saying, okay, Ralph, I got you squared away. I'm going to have you log in as, you know, company name Mike Incorporated. Username is Ralph. Your password is 1234. Boom, you're ready to go. But so Unity Cloud, in a nutshell, that's what it is. That's going to be, it, it's real popular this time of year during, during football and sporting events. Um, I, I have found that most people, after they get really comfortable with Unity Cloud, they do start desiring things like program audio, integration with a RTS or ClearCom system potentially, um, Tally, you know, the ability to label your channels. All of these are found in the Unity server. And so uh, you can outgrow the cloud. And when you're ready to do that, take a look at the Unity Intercom server option that runs on a Mac computer at your location. Um, and you can set it up so that you can still be on Wi-Fi or, you know, Wi-Fi or cellular data, just like the cloud, only it's going to be a lot more popular. But sorry, I'm clicking around here. But anyway, thank you, everybody, for your for your time. And I uh, hope that clears up a little bit of, you know, Unity Cloud versus Unity Intercom and how to kind of get going with Unity Cloud.